Hello everyone. In this section we are going to learn about react.memo and the use callback hook. This concept is about implementing performance optimization. Memoization is a term used in computing for optimizing the performance by storing the results of expensive functions and returning cached results. So this is what memoization is all about. By using the use callback react memo, you practically improve the performance. You make sure that the components are not rendered unnecessarily. Too much of technical jargon, which I can understand. Certainly it is injurious. So let's practically try it in react with react.memo and use callback hook. We are going to optimize the performance, but for that, we are going to create one application whose output is going to be like this. So to begin with, I have some predefined code here where there is an app component which has two states. The one is counter and the other is the flag. This counter is a numeric state and the flag is a Boolean state. Now I want to display a header here and a footer. So I'm going to create two components whose name is header component and footer component. So I have created two files that is the header c.js and footer c.js. These two are going to display the header and footer. Let's also go through the header.js file. Here is the header component file where I am just using an h4 to display the header section. There is no logic I have written here. It is just there to display. The important point you need to notice here is I have added one console log which is displaying a message in the console that the header component is rendered. So let me just import this header component first. I'll say import the header component from header c.js and this component I want to display here. So I'm going to say header c and that's it. Let's also observe the output together. So we have the output here. Similarly, for footer, I have this footer c.js that is footer component js where I am just showing a function and also the h6 but I am specifying some style also. I have given some inline styling which anyway we have discussed in previous sections as well. So you can get it that how you can apply the inline styling. Important point to notice here is in this component also I have given a message that is the footer component rendered. So every time there is a component rendering happening, the console log, the respective console log is going to be displayed. Let's go back to the app.js. I'm going to import the footer component as well. So I'll say dot slash footer C, that's the file name. And I'm going to display this footer component here. The next thing is that we do have this counter and flag. What I want to implement here is I want to display the counter with a component and even the flag I want to display with a component. So for that I'm creating one component called display counter and one more component for display flag. Now these two are just presentational layers so they are going to display the counter and flag respectively. Let's start coding it. I'll open the display counter.js for your reference. Here also, I'm doing the same thing. I have the function display counter, which is a component which receives the props. So whatever is the value of counter that I'm going to receive in props. And this also displays console log and the message that is the display counter component is rendered. 
it is just a display layer so I just want to import this let's import the display counter from the respective file and let me also use the display counter component here so now it should display the value of the counter but the problem is I have not yet passed that value as an attribute so in the display counter I am using a property called props.counter which certainly I can write here so I'll go back to app.js and here I'm going to define the counter property that is the attribute and I'm going to pass the CNT so now you see that we have the counter getting displayed similarly we have the display flag which is going to display the value of flag let me also show you the display flag here I'm using the flag property so that's the name of attribute we are going to receive here going back to app.js and let's say let me first import it display flag from the respective path and here we'll have the display flag component where the attribute is going to be flag and you're going to pass the m flag here that's it so now we have both the counter and flag displayed just to display this output now there are four components let's just add one more component which will change the counter and flag I want that there has to be a common component so that component I'm going to create is a change state component which will change the counter or flag depending on what value you pass so let me do that I have one component only that is change state let me open the change state component coding so here we have this component where there is some styling applied which is okay the first statement in all the components is a console log and the rendered message which is fine and in this component I'm taking a button and applying some inline styling and on click we are just calling the click event so this is just a simple component a button component which I have configured which you can reuse so now the next thing is that I'm going to import the change state component from again the respective path now let's add change state here so I'll say change state there is an attribute called caption where I'm going to say change counter and for this button let's take another button now this will change the flag all right so I hope you get the idea about the entire structure there are components for everything each and every job is defined or done or handled by different components now comes the tricky part if you observe the change state component I have configured the on click event of the button and here is the caption configured the next thing is I'm going to apply the click event so I'm going to say click that's the custom event for the change state component and inside this let's say I'm going to call a function called change flag that's the function I'm going to call here similarly let's take another event for the counter and here I'm going to say change counter here I'm going to type the change counter is equal to this is going to be an arrow function where I can simply say set count and here we can set the value similarly I'm going to configure the change flag and here I'll try to set the flag so the flag will be let's say whatever is the value we are going to negate that value that's it let's try to run the code now here you see that every time you click the respective buttons it changes the respective states as well now I just want to show you the problem here we have many components which you have already seen let me open the console for once there are no messages at the moment that's fine now I'm going to refresh the screen see what happens it says that header component is rendered yes absolutely the 
display counter component is rendered that's fine display flag is rendered that's also fine then the change counter because cs render says that the change state component is rendered second time also cs rendered is displayed because this change flag is rendered and the footer is rendered which is fine when you load this application these components are rendered which is absolutely fine let me just try to change the value of counter now if you observe first time the message was still the footer rendered when i clicked on this change counter it actually changed only this portion isn't it in spite of that for every component the rendered the console log is executed that means for every component the render is executed this is where the problem is this is where you need to optimize so that when this counter is changed it should not call the header render maybe footer render or even the flag render isn't it it should render the respective component only so when we put multiple components this is the scene and this is where we have to use react memo and up to certain extent use callback so now when i click on the flag it does render footer header and everything when i click on the counter it does render the all other components as well how do you resolve this this is where memoization can help you the only thing you have to do is let's say at the moment footer header everything is getting executed what you should do is when you export the component the only thing you have to do is you just have to add react dot memo here so this will not be called unnecessarily let's add this first of all everywhere i'm going to add this to footer react dot memo to header react dot memo to change state also i'm going to say react dot memo which will do the memoization display counter display flag let's add this here also now i guess we are done with all the components so now we have implemented memoization that is react dot memo now let's try to observe the output so when you reload the page certainly the, all the components respective render is called now let's try and see whether do we have the next render getting called or not see i am clicking on just the counter click now if you observe after the last footer rendered there is only the display counter render called even not the flag component render is called so now it is calling the right render method only let me just change the flag now if you observe only the display flag rendered called not the display counter render called so here everything is running fine now but still there is one issue and the issue is because we are using the same component for both counter and flag it is calling this component twice even when i click on the counter or when i click on the flag so you see that only the respective component rendered is called but for this change counter and change flag which is actually one component it is getting called twice this should also not happen how do you resolve this this is where you can use the use callback hook so now we want that this change counter and change flag whichever is clicked only for that particular entity the change state should be called for that what you can do is you can simply call this related function using the use callback use memo or use callback they do the similar job they have a different syntax so here in this site as it says that pass an inline callback and an array of dependencies so we are going to do that if you observe the syntax here it says that the use callback where you pass the function and the dependencies is equivalent to use memo 
have an arrow function and then you pass the function and dependencies. We are going to try this with the use callback. Let's go to the coding. This is where I have to use the use callback. Again, I'm repeating what was the problem. The problem was all the components were getting rendered unnecessarily, which has been stopped by React Memo. But when you have the same component, still it is getting rendered for other states as well. If you want to stop that along with react.memo, I'm going to use the use callback. And this function which I'm calling, I'll put inside a callback. So the first parameter is the inline function which is there. The only thing I have to add is the dependency for which this has to be called. So CNT is the state which you have to look for in this case. And here another callback I'm going to use for the flag dependency. So I'm going to say M flag. That's the state name. That's it. Now let me just refresh. Now you see that for every component, header, display counter, display flag, change counter, change flag, and footer. Let me just change the counter value. Now if you observe after footer, there is a display counter called because this component is rendered and this component is also rendered. So only once the change state rendered is called. Same goes with this change flag. If I click here, there will be two calls. That is the display flag component rendered and this change state for the flag is called. So this is what memoization is all about. By using the use callback react memo, you practically improve the performance. You make sure that the components are not rendered unnecessarily. If you are looking for front-end full-stack opportunities in the US, Anak Technologies can help you find your next big project. Also, if you are looking to turn up your existing skills in front-end, that is mean or mern stack, you can enroll with one of Anak Technologies training programs. Anak Tech is supporting my initiative to bring more up-to-date technical tutorials specially crafted for viewers like you. Check out the links in the description for more details.